live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Fortinet. Now, here are your hosts, Lisa Martin and Peter Burris. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. We are live in Las Vegas at Fortinet's Accelerate 2017. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, joined by my co-host, Peter Burris, and we're really excited about our next guest. We are talking next with Derek Mankey. Derek, you are, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. I'm you have a here. really important role at Fortinet. You mm. are the global security strategist. Correct, yes. You have a, uh, established yourself as a thought leader with over 15 years of cybersecurity expertise, and your goal is to make a positive impact towards the global war on cybercrime. That's a big goal. It's a very big, big <laughs> goal, but it's, it's uh, it's, it's a big, hairy goal, but it's a, it's, uh, it's, it's critically important, I believe. I firmly believe, believe this over my whole career, and I'm starting to see some, some good traction with the efforts that we're doing, too, so. And it's yeah. becoming more and more critical every day as Absolutely. breaches and hacks, or it's a daily occurrence. You're also the leader of FortiGuard Labs. You've got a, a team of over 200. Tell our viewers who can't be here today, what is FortiGuard Labs? What are you doing to leverage threat intelligence to help Fortinet's customers? Sure, so we're trying to manage complexity because uh, that's always the enemy of security, right? And we're trying to make it simple to uh, across the board, right? So we're managing security for all of our customers, 300,000 customers plus. Uh, that's a big deal, right? So we've had to invest a lot into that in terms of uh, how we can do that to make it simple to the end users. Um, so what FortiGuard Labs is, is it's services we deliver to the end user, protection services across the spectrum, uh, our whole product portfolio, right? And so we have uh, world-class expertise as a security vendor, right? 200 plus people on the team, experts in each domain. We have researchers and experts looking at things like industrial attacks, mobile uh, problems, uh, malicious websites, uh, ripping apart so what we call reverse engineering uh, malware samples to find out digital fingerprints of who's creating um, these attacks so we can work also in, in partnerships with that too. At the end of the day, we have the humans working on that, but we've also invested a ton into uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. We have to comb through over 50 billion attacks in a day. Um, and, wow. and so the machines are also helping us to create a lot of this automated protection. That's all driven by our patents, by our world-class development teams. That gets down to the end user so that they don't have to invest as much into uh, their own security operation centers, because that's a big OPEX uh, expenditure, right. uh, expenditure. So we're helping to alleviate that issue, especially with, the, you know, as, as everybody knows today, the big gap in um, cybersecurity professionals. So that helps alle alleviate that issue too. You, you said 50 billion attacks That's correct, a day. sir, yes, yes. So uh, clearly- Potential attacks. Pota oh, yes. potential attacks, yes, okay. Yeah. So uh, clearly that means that increasing percentages of the total body of attacks are no longer coming from humans. They're coming from other things. Absolutely. Yes, and yeah. how, how's that playing out? It's a fascinating landscape right now. Uh, so what, uh, you know, with, with every legitimate model, there's an illegitimate model to follow, especially with cybercrime and, and what we see in the digital underground, uh, dark web, all these sorts of things. Um, you know, you, you, you rewind back to the 90s, right? Your, your, your opportunistic hacker was just trying to pop up a, a message box on a, on a Windows 95 or Windows 98 system at the time. Um, nowadays, uh, of course, the attack surface has grown tremendously. Right? You look back to DARPA and back in 1989, it had 60,000 systems connected on the internet. Now we have IPv6, 20 plus billion connected devices. Everything is a target now, especially with the internet of things, uh, smart television. And, and a potential threat. And a, exactly, exactly. and a weapon, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so to capitalize on that, we've seen uh, uh, cyber, what we're seeing now is cyber criminals developing automated systems of their own to infect these systems, to report back to them. So they're doing a lot of that heavy work to, uh, you know, the heavy lifting using their own machines to infect and their own algorithms to infect these systems. And then from there, it'll escalate back up to them to further capitalize and leverage those attacks. Um, but there, there's, uh, on any given minute, we're seeing between 500,000 to 700,000 um, hacking attempts Across, and this is our own infrastructure. So we have, uh, we, we're, we're leading in terms of firewalls and unit shift. So we're able to get a good, a good grasp on intelligence out there, what's happening. Uh, and yeah, in any given minute, over, uh, well over 500,000 hacking attempts on systems worldwide. So every hour, 30 million. Yeah, so quick math. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazing. I'm amazing multiplication. <laughs> I yeah. almost got it wrong though. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, but yeah. 30, 30 yeah. million 
30 million hacks yeah. an hour. Yeah, and so our job is to identify that. We don't want to block things we shouldn't be, so there has to be a very big emphasis on quality of intelligence as well. So we're, we're, we've done a lot uh, with our machines to validate attacks, to be able to prote uh, protect against those attacks, and that, especially when it comes to these attacks like intrusion prevention, that attack surface now, we, we got to be able to not just look at attacks on PCs now, so that's why that number keeps ticking up. Right, because it's, proliferation of mobile, yeah, IoT. directly related, absolutely. But this is clearly something that eyeballs are not going to, uh, are not going to solve. Not alone. So I'm a very, a very big advocate saying that we cannot win this war alone, uh, just relying even on the brightest minds in the world. But we can also not just rely 100% on machines to control. Sure. It's just like autonomous vehicles, right? You look at Tesla and these other vehicles and Google, what they're doing, you can never, it's a trust exercise again, right? You can never pass 100% control to that automation. Rather, you can get up to that 99 percentile with automation, but you still need those bright minds looking at it. So to answer your question, um, Eyeballs alone, no, but the approach we've taken is to scale up, distribute, and use machines to identify, find, try, to try to find that needle in the haystack, uh, and then you know, escalate that to our bright minds when we need to look at the, the, the big attacks that matter and, and solve some, some more of the complex issues. Speaking of bright minds, you and your team recently published an incredible blog on 2017 predictions. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Wow, is it on, that's on the Fortinet blog? People yeah, can that's find correct, that. yeah, yeah. Really incredibly thorough, eye-opening, and there were six predictions, but t take us through maybe the top three. We talked about the proliferation of devices, the, the attack surface getting larger, more and more things becoming potential threats. Mm -hmm. What are the top three, maybe, biggest threats that you're seeing, and is there any industry in particular that pops up as one of the prime targets. Absolutely. So um, I'll get into some buckets on this. I, you know, I, I think first and foremost, uh, what's prime right now, what we're seeing is uh, what, uh, what we're calling autonomous malware. So this is the notion of basically what we we're just talking about to your question on what's driving this data, what's driving all of these attack points. Um, first of all, the internet's been seeded with what I call ticking time bombs right now. Uh, we have 20 plus, you know, whatever the number is going to be, all of these uh, uh, billions of devices that are connected that are inherently, in my professional opinion, insecure. A lot of these devices are not following proper security development life Is there cycles. accountability to begin with? Uh, no, not at this point. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's something that the DHS and NIST have just released some guidelines on um, at the end of last year. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot of activity on accountability for that. Um, but that has to be taken care of. Unfortunately, right now, um, it's been seeded, right? There's, then this attack surface is there, so we already have all these open avenues of attack, and that's why I call it a ticking time bomb. Because it's been seeded, and now these are ripe for attack, and we're seeing attackers capitalize on this. So what we're seeing is uh, the first indications of autonomous malware, right? Malware that is capable of mapping out these vulnerable points, the machines doing this, and the machines attacking the other machines. So it's not just the eyeballs and, and the cyber criminals doing this. We saw last year, unprecedented DDoS attacks, right? This is directly related to the Mirai botnet. Uh, we had gone from a 600 gig to terabyte, uh, terabit plus DDoS attacks. That was unheard of before. They are leveraging all of these different IoT devices as uh, horsepower you know, to, to attack these systems in a massive dis distributed denial of service attack. The interesting part about Mirai is that it's also using open source intelligence as well. So this is something that humans, a, a black hat attacker, would typ typically have to do. They would have to get reports back from one of their systems and say, okay, now I've found all these vulnerable systems, I'm going to go attack these systems. But they're the glue. So they're now removing themselves as the glue and making this completely automated where uh, you know, a botnet like Mirai is able to use Shodan as an example. It's an open source database and say, here are a whole bunch of vulnerable systems, I'm going to go attack it. And so that's the, to my you know, point of view, that's the first indication of this smart malware. Because uh, malware has always been guided by humans, right? But now I think we're starting to see a lot of more of that intelligent attack, the offense, the intelligent offense um, being baked in to these pieces of malware. So I think it's going to open this whole new breed of attacks and malware. And obviously, um, we're in a, a whole new arms race when it comes to that. How can we get ahead of the bad guys? And so obviously this is what Fortinet's doing on, on the uh, autonomous defense, right? Uh, our security fabric and fabric ready approach. That's all about beating them to the punch on that. Having our machines, the defensive machines talk to each other, combine world-class intelligence like FortiGuard so that it can defend against those attacks. Um, it's a tough task, but I really firmly believe that this year is a year that we have the advantage, we can have the advantage as white hats to, to get one leg up on the black hat attackers. 
as I said, for 15 years at FortiGuard Labs, we've, we've invested a ton into uh, our AI and machine learning intelligence, so we're experts on the automation. I don't believe the Black Hat attackers are experts in automation. So I think for that reason, we have, the, uh, we have an, a, uh, a really good opportunity this year. Because you always hear about the Black Hats, another data breach and all this stuff happening. They're, they're always at the advantage. And I think we can really turn the tables this year. You have some great experience working, not just in the private sector, but in the public sector as well. You've done work with NATO, with Interpol, with CERT. What is your perspective on public sector and private sector working together? Is that essential to win this war on cybercrime? Absolutely. We need everybody at the table. Uh, I, we cannot win it um, as one single vendor alone. Um, and so I'm a very, you know, as, as a good example of that is work, we're starting to do across the board. Um, this is something I firmly believe in. It's really near and dear to my heart. I've worked on it for the course of uh, well over six years now. And we have a lot of the existing partnerships across um, organizations. So other security vendors and experts. Cyber Threat Alliance is an excellent example. We're a founding, mem uh, founding member of that. And these are competitors, but uh, you know, security vendors getting together to level the playing field on intelligence. We can still really remain competitive on the solutions and how we implement that intelligence. But at least, uh, you know, trying, it's like a Venn diagram. You look at that attack surface out there. You want to try to share all that information so that you can uh, deliver that to security controls and protect against it. Um, so the Cyber Threat Alliance is a good example, but that's private sector. If you look at national computer emergency response, law enforcement, um, we have uh, made great inroads into that, uh, working with the likes of uh, computer emergency response to give them intel. If we find bad stuff happening somewhere, we're not law enforcement. We can't go take the server down and disrupt campaign. Uh, we can't arrest or prosecute people, uh, but they can. But they don't have all that expertise and intelligence right. that we do, all the data points. So this is, you're starting to see a lot of this uh, spring up and we're doing a lot of leadership in this area. Um, and I, I think it's absolutely essential. Uh, President Obama last year mentioned it, uh, the Cyber Threat Alliance and the public private sector needing to work together right. um, in one of his speeches at Stanford. Um, and I, I believe it's the only way we can win this. Um, you have to go after the head of the snake too. If we just are always on the defense and we're always just trying to disrupt, right. cyber criminals, it's just a slap on the wrist to them. They're going to go set up shop somewhere else. Um, we need to be able to actually go and prosecute these guys. And we had a really good case last year. We took down a, working with Interpol and the EFCC, a $62 million crime ring US. Um, you know, they went and prosecuted the kingpin of this operation ha um, out of Nigeria. It was an unprecedented win wow. and example, but we need to do more of that. But it's a good example of a, a healthy working public-private sector relationship. Wow, what an incredible uh, experience that you have what you've achieved with, with FortiGuard Labs. What excites you most going forward? We're just at the beginning of 2017 with what's been announced here, the partnerships that you guys have, have formed. What excites you most about this year and maybe the, the, some of the, the key steps you want to take against um, cybercrime as well? Sure. Yeah, so I think we want to, so Cyber Threat Alliance is a, a, a very big machine. There's a lot of exciting things happening, so that's going to be a really good initiative that's going to con uh, carry forward momentum this year. Um, what excites me most, uh, well, it's not always a good thing, I guess, <laughs> right? But we look at all the bad news that's out there. Like I said, I think it's just going to be, um, th there's, there's so much fuel that's being uh, thrown on the fire when it comes to attacks right now, right? I mean, like I said, this, this, these time bombs that have been planted out there, we're going to see the year of IoT attacks for sure. Mariah's, um, a new version of Mariah's are, already come out. They're, they're selling this, uh, they're starting to sell this, commercialize this, and it's even more advanced in terms of intelligence than the previous one. That sort of stuff. Um, it depends on your definition of the word excites, of yeah. course, but, <laughs> but these are the things that we have opportunity. And, and again, I think going back to my first point, the white hats having, for the first time in my point of view, a leg up on the black hats, that opportunity, that really excites me. Um, when we look at what's happening moving forward in 2017, healthcare, I think, is going to be a very big thing in terms of attack targets. So we're going to be focused on that uh, in terms of attacks on not just healthcare records, uh, which are much more valuable than um, financial records, as an example, but uh, um, you know, medical devices. Again, the IoT play in healthcare, that's a big deal. Uh, we're starting to already see um, attacks on that. Smart cities as well, That's you look forward to the next three years. Building management systems. A lot of people talk about SCADA and industrial control. This is definitely a, a, a big attack target to a certain, um, you know, a certain attack surface, obviously power plants, electrical grids. But building management systems and uh, these automated systems that are being put in, even um, 
uh, uh, smart vehicles and smart homes is another big target that's unfolding over the next year. Hard to air gap a home or, and certainly not a city. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and again, it goes back to the point that a lot of these devices being installed in those homes uh, are inherently insecure. So that's a big focus for us, and that's a big thing FortiGuard is doing, is looking at what those attacks are so that we can defend against that at the network layer, that we can work with all of our business partners that are here uh, at, uh, at uh, Accelerate this year to deliver those solutions and protect against it. Wow, it sounds like, and I think Peter would agree, your passion for what you do is, is very evident. As, as those bad actors are out there and as the technologies on the bad end are getting more advanced and intelligent, as you say, it's great to hear what you and your team are doing to help defend against that uh, on the enterprise side and, and one day on the consumer side as well. So Derek Mankey, Global Security Strategist for Fortinet, thank you so much for being on theCUBE and sharing pleasure. your expertise Anytime. with thank us. Thank you very much. Well, on behalf of my co-host Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE, but stick around, we'll be right back. Oh.